Man, I got my favorite shirt dirty. I can't believe I got this shirt dirty. <laughs> Welcome back to High Noon Racing. Last week, while installing the transmission, we had to remove the turbo and all its mounting bracketry. Now we had to do this to make sure that our transmission drive line angles would line up. And to get those transmission drive line angles to line up, we had to tilt the engine forward, pivot it to the right about 12 degrees. So when our engine pivoted to the right about 12 degrees and angled forward, now all of our hot side piping needs to follow suit and do the same exact thing. Now I've got a plan for an easy fix. And this plan should also allow us to unbolt the entire hot side and turbo in one go. That way, you know, it'll make it easier in the future. We don't gotta cut nothing out. We don't gotta unbolt the turbo. We just unbolt the whole system. Pull it all right out, just in case we need to pull that motor out or stick another one in. Now make sure to stick around to the end. See if your boy's a redneck genius or a whiskey bent fool. guys so today we'll be discussing kind of why i chose the place to mount the turbo like where i'm putting it the reasons behind that that are really important like oil drain back to the engine you know there's a couple important factors that we got to go over that just in case y'all need to know those things but first up i'm gonna show y'all how i'm gonna be handling this here 40 50 pound fixture and uh yep you got that right we're gonna use this cherry picker. And we dance round and round, round and round we go. Oh, come on now. Now you wanna dance too? You got to get up out of my way. Oh yeah. You about to get retired into scrap metal anyhow. So here on the left side, you see that we're hitting our existing frame point. You see the gap. And on the right side, you can see that our V-band is pretty much lined up. It's really close. Frame is just down and probably wants to be over a little bit. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut off some excess to give us some clearance so this thing can sit freely without being hit or hindered by anything. So now that we got one side of the V-bands lined up, and yeah, these are two different V-bands. I plan on hacking this V-band off in the future and welding on the other side so it's just a better V-band. V-bands that came with the exhaust kind of suck. But now that this is lined up, I'm gonna throw the clamp on and just snug it. And that's just to kind of hold it in place while I get the other side on. Now on this other side, sorry about that. Now on this other side, you can kind of see how far off we are and what we need to do. I'm gonna have to use this frame rail and a strap to pull this over a little bit. We got our strap to bring it over. And now the V-band will cinch it all into place. All right, so now that we got them both snugged up, we can go ahead and give them both the beans. Now we can kind of see what we're working with here. How far down and how far over it went. And that's gonna be just fine because we're gonna put some flanges on here that'll bolt up on both sides so that we can remove this whole hot side whenever we want, just by unbolting it. Let's go take a look at the other side and see what we're dealing with. So this side has a little bit more aggressive of a gap, but it's not that big of a deal. We'll be able to fab up still whatever we need. Now it's time to get all the 
the stuff prepped and start getting ideas on how we're going to weld these tabs on and line them up nice and nice and clean. Double check everything, make sure we got it where we want it. So the first thing we need to consider with this is to make sure that our oil drain feed is all going downhill. In the beginning, I talked about how we were gonna bring up things like critical points. This is one of the critical points. You gotta make sure that, that oil drain is all going downhill. This happens to be gravity fed. When it drains, it is just gravity draining. So you gotta make sure it's a good downward angle. Let's go. All right, cool. So as you can see. So now that we got one important thing out of the way, we need to get the last important thing out of the way before we can start to have some fun. So we need to take our compressor side housing off and clock it the way that we're gonna have it in the orientation that is gonna follow the intercooler piping to the intercooler, just to make sure no moving parts rub or touch it. This side is clear all the way around. So now we're gonna do the compressor side. She gonna be close to stuff, but she ain't touching. And that's what I wanted to know. I'm okay with being close to moving parts, so this is good. Now that all the critical stuff is out of the way, now we can get creative and start the party. She ain't complete, but what we needed to get done is done. So that's good. This is a good 10 hour job we had to do here. Now, I tried to be as visually descriptive as I could while taking the video, but I realized there's only so, there's only so much time in the day. So I gave y'all the gist of it, showed y'all some of the major details, and then I completed it. Now it's time to take a look at the final result. Come on over. If you guys like my content make sure to check out the whole build series over here make sure to like comment and subscribe because it really helps me out we out here doing things so that's all i need <laughs> all right y'all catch y'all in the next one now i've got a plan for an easy fix 